today and blessings on you. Thank you for being here. And I thank the Lord for all the gifts he's sent us today. And one of those is my good friend, Marty Hennis, back there. And blessings on you, my friend. Always good to see you. And all our guests today, may you know the presence of the Lord as we continue to worship. Today is a unique Sunday. It's the Sunday closest to Memorial Day, so you can have that tomorrow. Uh, did a little research, and uh, Memorial Day started. Uh, it was petitioned uh, to whoever the president was at the time. I'm not the historian that Jim is, but the, the president at that particular time. We need to honor those who, who died in the Civil War. And so this day came about at that particular time. And then it was adopted again to be for all those who had who had died in fighting for the freedom of our country. And you know, I really think that the way our country is now, that the term rolling over your graves for those who had the heart to die for this country for the freedoms we're supposed to live out and to have. They saw the, the situation of our country now. I think they would actually roll over in their graves. Uh, we live in a when the death in a day where there's more evil when the, and there's more good. And they died for a freedom so I could stand out on the street corner and praise the name of Jesus. Amen. They died so I could stand in the marketplace and lift up the name of Jesus. Amen. They died so I could stand in the pulpit and proclaim the name of Jesus. Amen. And I can guarantee you there's so many people out there today that would love to shut my mouth up and to shut your mouth up so we could not proclaim anything about the kingdom of God. Prayer has been taken out of public school. The, the Lord's Prayer has been taken out of courthouses. They've done everything they could to silence the name of God. But you know what? They've been trying to do that for a long time. They'll have to kill me to shut me up. You need to know that. I'll never quit speaking the one who died to set me free. Amen. As we think about that, some of you have experienced the loss of a loved one uh, in the service of our country. Uh, Olivia, not Olivia, Athena, Braxton, uh, your friend, his name is Tresh. If you three will come down here for me, please. I'd appreciate that very much. All right. I'm not forgetting anybody else. Okay. If you love these who are standing up, would you please stand up? <laughs>
Does everybody have a flag now? Sitting on the front row, right, you already had one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> we'll do everything we can to get Mel down on the front. Meryl down on the front row. I will someday. Okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody got one. All right. Let's have a word of prayer together. Mm -hmm. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for this country that we live in. And Lord, there's been a lot of sacrifice, sacrifice made for the freedom we have to worship today. And Lord, I don't want that sacrifice wasted mm. by, by me and by those who are here. We've got to remember, God, that you have provided a place called America but so far, we can still praise Jesus almost any place. Lord, it's hard to do that in the schoolhouse, and it may be hard to do that in the courthouse. But Lord, wherever you put me, schoolhouse or courthouse, I'm still going to praise you. God, we don't want to waste the sacrifice that men and women have made for us to have this freedom and not use it. So we, may we not be guilty, those who died before us, for this freedom, to waste it. Let us always be loud and maybe obnoxious to those who don't want to hear, but still get the name of Jesus to this world. As it's gone to the four corners, we've missed some of the spots in between because we have not done our job. So Lord, let us be diligent and diligent to do the work of taking the gospel to our neighbors, to our work associates, to those we meet on the street, wherever we're at, let the mission of our life be to get the good news of Jesus Christ out. We ask that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Nothing that you can be negative about. He is holy God. 
When I ask you who is Jesus, someone would say, well, he was a, he was a good teacher. Uh, and some of you just take his words as a teacher. You don't take him as the Son of God because they don't change your life. Do you, do you hear what I said? Some of you look at Jesus just as a teacher because he doesn't change your life. You know, the scripture says that when Jesus comes into your life, therefore all things pass away, all things become new. Now, I, I know how I was, and I know how I am. There's an old part of me that I don't ever want anybody to know about. There's a new part of me that I want everybody to know about. And that's the part that Jesus has made in me when I became a child of God. That's news worth sharing. Someone said the other day, I was, you know, I listen to Bob Radio now, and I hear some things. I may not remember everything they say or how they said it, but they, they had an idea like this. If you say you know Jesus, and you don't share Jesus, then you really don't know Jesus. Because when Jesus changed your life, you really have something to shout about. Amen. So who do you say Jesus is? Is he just a good teacher? Is he the the man upstairs sitting next to the Father, who is he to you? <coughs> I don't really want to know who he is to you. I want you to know who he is according to the Scripture. He is the Son of God. He is the living Christ. He is the one who's come into this world to change your life and mine. Amen. My question is this. How long have you known? Some of you would tell me a a long time. I got out my calculator sitting in the office to just to make sure I knew how long I knew him. I got saved when I was 17. I'm 66 now. If I punch the numbers right, the difference in that is 49 years. That's how long my life has been different. But you know what? I'm not satisfied with how different it is. Because I know that I can get closer to my Lord than I am right now. I know that I can be more victorious in my life than I am right now. I know that I can be more sincere in my life than I am right now. I know I can be more forgiving in my life than I am right now. I know I can be more compassionate in my life than I am right now. If I just get a little closer to my Lord. If you've lost urgency and the sense of importance to get closer to your Lord today than you were yesterday and to be to more tomorrow than you are today then you become stagnated I've been I used to get to fish a lot I hardly get to fish anymore at all uh, but that's okay but I've been to places where they said, let's go fishing. And the water didn't have an inlet. And it didn't have an outlet. It just was there. And it had a high stench to it. And I said, I'm not fishing here. I don't want to eat anything that comes out of there. It had a high stench to it. Listen. If a Christian's life stays where you may be a Christian, but if it stays where it's at, I think you could say it has the problem of stagnation, if that's the word. Webster can make them up, so can I. <laughs> and stag you know, if you become stagnant in your Christian life, then it might be that all of a sudden you lose some of that compassion. You lose some of that holiness. You lose some of that righteousness. You lose some of that intensity in your life. What does that mean? That means you become stagnant. And most stagnant things begin to stink. <clears throat> Are you spiritually sour in your life? There's something about your life that's uh, out of order. Could it be that your Christian life has begun to diminish instead of increase? Simon Peter was at a place where it said, Simon, son of Bar-Jonah, I'll give to you the keys of heaven. 
what you claim on earth, you'll get to claim it. What you, what you bind on earth, it'll be bound. What you loose on heaven, it'll be loose. He says, I'm giving you all kind of authority. In you, the example will be set. On you, the church will thrive. He's at that high moment, isn't he? Have you been in that high moments in your life? And you're not there anymore? Let's see what happens here. In verse 21, from that time, from the time he had this conversation with Peter, from that time Jesus Christ began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and the chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised up on the third day. And Peter speaks up again. And Peter took him to the side and began to rebuke him. Now you've got to have some courage to rebuke the Lord, don't you? And he rebuked him, saying, God forbid it, Lord, this shall never happen to you. But then, then he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You're a stumbling block to me. You're not setting your mind on God's interest, but on man's. Now he was very high at one moment. He was given the keys to life and death. What he bound would be bound. What he loose would be loose. On him, the church was going to be built. And then Jesus begins to talk about what's supposed to happen for my salvation and yours and for his too. He said, get behind me, Satan. Can you think of going from such a high to such a low? What happened? He took his mind off the things of God. He said, now he had the interest of men. That's why I tell you this ministry is not about me. I've told you before, I'm like a limp piece of spaghetti if God was not in my life. I'm very excited to know someone who strengthens me to do what I get to do and he gets all the glory for it. My intensity to do what I do and how I live my life has grown stronger over these 49 years. And I can tell you this, it has room to grow even stronger. And I'm going to tell you, if you're breathing right now, I don't see anybody falling over. If you're breathing right now, guess what you've got? You've got the opportunity to become more consistent with your life by getting to know Jesus a little bit more today. And if you're breathing tomorrow, you have the opportunity to get a little more closer to Jesus than you are today. Now, how are you going to do that? Now, the Bible says, to give thanks to the Lord in everything. Does it not? So if you're consistent in your life to give thanks to God in everything. Now to give thanks to God in everything means one thing's not going to be happening in your life. You're not going to be complaining. Did you hear that? If you give thanks to God for everything in your life, you're not going to be complaining. If you give thanks to God for everything in your life, you're not going to be slandering anybody. If you give thanks to God for everything in your life, you're not going to be judging anybody. By the way, if you're going to be consistent in your life, you're going to remember it's not your place to judge. In John 16, it says it's the role of the Holy Spirit to judge of righteousness, sin and judgment. That's the role of the Holy Spirit. It's not yours. Stay away from it. Be obedient to what, let the Holy Spirit do what He's supposed to do because He can do a whole lot better job of it than you can. You know, it says give thanks in everything. It also says pray without ceasing. How do you stay consistent in your life and not have that high, high, low, that low, low, low? You do it by giving thanks in everything. 
and, and cease in your life without praying. A lot of times y'all pray like this. Good God, good food, let's eat. That's all you do. You gotta have a, 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 a deep, intense, wonderful conversation with God. Letting him know how much you love him, how much you still need him, how you want to be serving in his kingdom. I'm a servant standing in this pulpit, but I'm a servant in my home. I'm a servant when I'm walking down the street. I'm a servant when I go to the bank. I'm a servant when I stop at the gas station. I'm just a servant. When I was in Home Depot, I was a servant because I'm looking for any place, anyone to speak to Jesus to, to pray with, to encourage. I'm just a servant. I'm not any more than what you are. You are a servant of God. I want you to have it with a great intensity and, 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 a, and a great consistency. Not a high moment and a low moment, but a, a faithful life moment that you live, making sure that people recognize that you're just not a person that walks across the face of this earth. You're a servant of God who walks across this face of earth, this face of the earth. And what you get to do as you walk is you make a difference. If you don't care what's happening around your life, you don't know who I know. I know God, the living God. I know the Son of the living God. I know He's changed my life. I need to know that He's changed your life. I mean, you don't have a, a desire to make Him known. You don't know Him. Because when He grabs you, He grabs you good. He wakes you up from your sinfulness and brings you into His righteousness. He covers you in His righteousness so you can make Him known through the life that you live. And the only way you'll do that consistency is by giving thanks and everything and praying without ceasing. Another way you'll do that, the Scripture says, love one another as God in Christ has loved you. So if you love one another, I don't have the privilege to hate anybody. Those who don't know my Lord, guess what? I'm going to pray for them, but I'm going to keep reaching out to them. I'm going to keep loving them. I'm going to keep ministering to them. I want them to know what I know because I know Him and He's worth knowing. It doesn't matter where you know me or not, but if you know Him, you, you know someone. He's the God who spoke creation into existence. And you get to know Him. So make him known to others, please, by being consistent, by giving thanks, by praying without ceasing, by loving as he loved you. And he loved you willing enough to sacrifice for you. Who you've been sacrificing for? Who you've been laying your life on the line for? Who you've been doing that for? Be consistent in making your life a life of sacrifice to touch the others, to minister to their needs. So you've got to be thankful. You've got to be praying. You've got to be loving. And you got to be forgiving. It says, forgive one another as God in Christ has forgiven you. If you want to be consistent and not have that high, high or that low, low, then you got to be forgiving one another as God in Christ Jesus has forgiven you. There's people, I've told you this before, and you, you're going to know this statement. I've stood, stood close enough to people who said, Keith, I've got your back. They were close enough to stab me in my back. But as soon as they did that, you know what I offered? I offered forgiveness. Because if I don't have forgiveness in my heart to those who have mistreated me, have ill-treated me, who tried to trip me up, who tried to lie about me, tried to ruin my reputation, that's not an issue to me. Because if I can't forgive them, then I don't know the forgiveness of God. But the prayer that Jim leads us in, Lord, forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. In other words, if I don't forgive, then I'm not forgiven. I want to live as a forgiven child of God and know the love of God in a way deeper today than I did yesterday. And I, to do that, I've got to be forgiving of everybody that's ever done anything against me. So I can tell you, there's no bitter, bitterness in this pastor's life. Is there any bitterness in your life? It's only because you haven't forgiven somebody if it is. Or maybe you didn't get your way, so you got bitter about that. That means you got pride, so get rid of that. Listen, there needs to be a consistency about our life. Because we're up one moment and down the next. Guess what happens? We get called hypocrites. That's the last thing I 
That, that sounds like such an awful word to me as a Christian. That I'm not really who I say I am. I don't really do what people would expect me to do as a child of God. That, that, that would probably break my heart worse than anything else. Somebody walk up and call me a hypocrite. I don't want to be there. I want to be that consistent representation of the love of God by giving thanks, by praying without ceasing, by loving one another and forgiving one another just as I've been forgiven. I'm telling you, we need not to have that ha 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 and that low, low, low. We need to be faithful and consistent and intentional with our lives, with God's agenda and not man's interest. Anytime I try to stick my opinion into it, about what color this should be. You know, there, there, was this, there was this church. There was this church, and they wanted to get a chandelier to put in the foyer. They couldn't decide on, on how many bulbs it needed to have in it, how many of the little crystal things need to hang down for it. And one guy said, what does it really matter? Nobody knows how to play the thing anyway. <laughs> you see what's happening? They had man's interest because they wanted it just like they wanted. You know, what color was the carpet when I first got here? I don't remember. I don't care. If you want to change it, I'm not going to say a word about it. Because that's not an issue that has anything to do with my salvation. You see what I'm saying? I, I, I know we've got, we've got new flooring in there. We, we're getting new countertops and we're, we're painting the cabinets. I don't care what color you paint the, you paint the cabinets. Because I don't have an interest in that. That's not anything that's going to say anything to anybody about who God is, what the color of the cabinets are. It doesn't make any difference. Do you see what I'm saying? I don't care if you want to paint these walls green. I don't care. It doesn't have anything to do with what it has to do with who Jesus is. We get so caught on things that become our interest, that aren't God's interest, that we go from highs to lows. We find unforgiving spirits. We find bitterness. We find that we can't say that we love somebody. Why? Well, then we're going to get called hypocrite. Let's make sure that we look to the Word of God and do what the Word of God says to do and keep our mind on His things so we don't say from Jesus Christ, listen, I know that you knew me, but you sure did act like Satan a whole lot. I don't want that said about me, and I don't want that said about you. I want you to know the consistency that comes from keeping your things on God's agenda keeping your mind on God's agenda by being the person who prays without ceasing, who gives thanks and everything, who loves like they're supposed to love and who forgives who they love, and now who shows compassion toward one another.